The main purpose of the Kepler mission is to find out how many planets like Earth exist in our galaxy. In the past 15 years or so, over 400 planets have been discovered, but they tend to be like Jupiter-sized planets, which don't have um, any chance of having life on them. The quest is to find planets that are smaller and rocky and somewhat like the Earth, and possibly have oceans and the you know, possibility for life. So Kepler is a uh, satellite. It's a telescope that was launched to put up in space, was launched last March. Uh, the reason it's up in space is because the Earth's atmosphere blurs out the light that comes through the Earth's atmosphere, making it impossible to detect the small signals that occur when a planet goes in front of the star. So we put the telescope up in space that gets above the Earth's atmosphere, and that allows us to measure parts um, the, the precision is 20 parts per million, uh, which is something just absolutely impossible to do from the ground. The main focus of Kepler is to look for Earth-sized planets, and they have a well-developed uh, uh, team of experts to do that. But in doing that, they're going to find hundreds of other types of planets and interesting objects. Among those will be the Jupiter-sized planets, and that's where I fit in. I will be analyzing the Jupiter-sized planets in as much detail uh, with as much accuracy and precision as possible. Ultimately, in a few years, we'll be able to measure the uh, ratio of stars with planets, stars without planets, and know whether um, the possibility of life um, on terrestrial-sized planets, Earth-sized planets, is possible in the galaxy. It may not turn out to be such a black and white answer at the end of it, but at least we're making the first steps towards it. And this is the first big fundamental step. This is a big census of the galaxy to finally understand, are there Earth-like planets? Prior to this, there's been no dedicated high-quality mission that can go out and find many planets like Earth. Uh, Kepler's the first one to do that. And so being part of that is really exciting. I think it's one of the most exciting experiments um, in all of science. It addresses one of the uh, deep fundamental questions that we have. In my astrobiology class, we talk about the discoveries of extrasolar planets and uh, how we find them and what they're like. And so this topic of Kepler fits right into the class discussion. Last spring was the last time I taught that course, and I can show them some video of uh, video footage of the launch and that sort of thing, give them the background information, but we hadn't collected any data yet. This semester, I'm teaching the class again, and we finally have data from Kepler and some initial discoveries, so I'll be able to share those with them. And, I, you know, to be proud of the fact that I'm part of some of those discoveries. One of those discovered planets um, is some work that I've contributed pretty heavily to. They're very enthusiastic. They like to hear about it. They ask very good questions. I get emails saying I, things like, I've never seen a launch before, in, in a live launch before, and it was really exciting to watch. When uh, professors are involved in research um, that they get to share in the class, it makes the topics they cover seem more real and more exciting and it also lets the students realize that it's something that they can attribute to or contribute to they can aspire to doing this sort of work it's not something that you get out of a textbook in the library it's somebody that this guy in the front of the classroom is talking about and someday I'll have the knowledge that that person has probably more as uh, time goes on and we learn more and contribute to it it's not an impossible goal it's you know there's a person in front of the classroom doing it